Okay guys, let's take a look at today's lesson. Uh, we're going to be working some more with parametrics. We've done quite a bit with parametrics. It's been a couple of days learning um, a lot of information about parametrics. We looked at parametrizing rectangular you know, equations yesterday and now we are going to get more involved with parametrics. In Calculus 2, in our, our BC Calculus, we use parametrics and this kind of concept comes up. It comes up when we're working with parametrics and so I think it's going to be helpful for us to kind of understand a little bit more about parametrics before we encounter them in calculus. So let's, let's look and see what we have going on. So the first example we have a, a curve. We have a sketch that's part of a particular curve. Curve, they're calling it curve C with parametric equations right here. So here's our X component of our parametric equation and here's our Y component. And they tell us that the curve crosses the Y axis at the point A and crosses the X axis at the point B. So they're being very specific telling us exactly, you know, that's point B and that's point A. You know, exactly where those points are. Part A, A says show that A has coordinate 0, 3. Now this is a classic type of problem that we see on the AP Calculus test where they give you the answer and they say show that. It's almost like a little proof. You have to, basically what you have to do is you have to show the work that leads up to this answer. I mean they're giving you the answer and you need to show how that is possible. So that's what we're doing on part A. We're going to show that A has coordinates of 0, 3. So let's look at A and let's see if we can determine something we know about it without, you know, this information. Well, we know that it's on the y-axis and every point on the y-axis has an x value of 0, right? So that, that we know that. So why don't we use that in our parametric equations and see what we can learn. So what we would do is we would say, so this is part A, we would say let x equal 0 or you could just say x equals 0. So this is the start of our um, mathematical logic on how we can show that a is indeed 0, 3. So we let x equals 0, so let's use that information in this parametric equation. So 0 equals 1 minus 1 half t. So let's solve for t. I'm going to move the negative 1 half over. So 1 half t equals 1 or t equals 2. So what does that do for us? So that basically tells us when the parametric equation, you know, becomes point A. When does it pass through point A? It does that at t equals 2. So how is that going to help? Well, what we would do is we would take that t value and we would plug it into our y to see what happens. Well, what is the y value there? We know that the x value is 0. That's what we indicated, the x value is 0. We know that, that we need to find the y value. So to do that, let's use the y branch of our parametric equation. So y equals 2 squared minus 1 or y equals 3. So therefore, point A is 0, 3. And that would constitute as our work verifying that yes, that is, that is true, that A is 0, 3. Okay, how are we doing on that? Okay, so show that simply means show the work that verifies or proves that that's the case. That's all. all right. So let's look at part B. It says find the x coordinate of point B. Well, we're looking at point B right here. We know everything on the x axis would have a y value of zero. So let's start it the same way. So this is B. So let's say let y equals zero because that's what's you know happening here on point B the y value is 0 and so we're going to use that branch of our parametric equation this y branch we're going to plug in a 0 where the y is and then we have an exponential equation to solve now it's probably been some time you know a few months maybe since um, algebra 2 and you may not remember how to solve an exponential equation with these, these are going to be pretty simple, so we should be able to kind of do it in our head, you know, or kind of work through it instead of doing a formal solving here. So let's think, what in the world could we make that exponent value to cause that 2 to whatever to become a 1? A 0, it has to be a 0, right? t has to be 0. 2, anything to the 0 is 1. So we just kind of use logic instead of the, this, you know, the solving skills. 
um, so t would be zero. So that means, what does that mean? Well, that means that t is zero when this parametric curve passes through b. So if that's the case, then I can find the x-coordinate by plugging in that time into the x branch of my parametric equation. So I have x equals one minus one half times zero, and so x is gonna be one. And that's what it asked me to do, is it asked me to find the x coordinate of point B, which is just exactly what we did. Okay, how are we doing, is that okay? Okay, we have a few more examples on the next page, so let's go to the next slide. Here, on this, uh, on this example right here, we aren't given a graph, but we're told information about a graph. Basically, we are given some parametric equations, but here's my x branch of my parametric equation and my y, and it says the curve meets the x-axis at the points A and B. Find the coordinates of A and B. Hmm. So there's two points, apparently, that we're looking for. Let's see, so what do we know about the x-axis? So if, if our curve goes through the x-axis, that means that the y value is zero, right? So on the x-axis, that means that y is zero. So let's use that information to figure out when this happens. When does it cross the x-axis? So we would say zero equals four minus t squared, or t squared is four, or t is a plus or minus two. Now let me caution you right here. This is one of the most common mistakes that I see is forgetting the plus minus. Um, and it, it's gonna happen. I hope it never happens, but it always does. So if you're afraid that you might forget the plus minus, let's not solve it this way. Let's actually factor it. So if we, so instead of doing it this way, in case we would forget the plus minus, which would, we would lose half our answer, right? Let's go ahead and just factor it. This would factor as two minus t, two plus t, and then I would verify, I mean, would see, yes, I mean, I have two answers, plus or minus two. Okay, so let's just, we want to guard against <coughs> forgetting the plus minus, because uh, we don't want to lose half our points. All right, so we have two things to we have two things to investigate. T is negative two, and T is a positive two. So I'm going to what I like to do in my work is I like to just kind of here's what happens when T is negative two, and I'm going to work that piece. So when T is negative two, let's see, we're looking for we know what the Y value is already. Uh, let's look for the X value. So X would be negative two minus one, or X would be negative three. And just to double check my work, why not? Let's find the y value. y would be four minus negative two squared, or y would be, um, that would be four minus four or zero. So point A is negative three, zero. That's my first point. We okay with that? So I labeled my first point A because it's the one that came with the negative two because it occurred first in the timeline, right? If, negative two time occurs before positive two, so that's, I'm gonna name them in alpha order, you know, according to when they occur. So that's why I called this one point A, is because, you know, it's the negative two. So now let's find the other one. So T is two, what happens there? So let's figure out what our X value is. So X would be two minus one, or X would be one, and again, just, just for fun, right? Why not? Let's just find the Y value. We know it's zero, but oh, just for fun. So four minus two squared, which is, you know, zero. So B is going to be one, zero. And those are our two points. Okay, we okay with that? All right, the last type Type number two is a little bit more complex than the other types. We have a little bit more going on. Let's kind of read through there. So we have a curve is given parametrically by the equation. So we have a set of parametric equations right here. And the line x plus y plus four is zero meets the curve at A. Wow, they've mixed stuff up for us. We have, we have a set of equations in parametric, and then we have a rectangular equation just kind of thrown in there. 
So that's a little strange and um, a little troubling. So we need to intersect them. We have a, actually a couple of options here. We could go all into a rectangular land. We could eliminate the parameter here, create a rectangular equation, and intersect them like we've been doing for years. Right? We know how to intersect to a line and a parabola or whatever it turns out to be. We know how to do that. But instead of going to that, which, we're, which we know how to do, why don't we work with parametrics for a bit? Why don't we see how do we solve this without having to convert this or eliminate the parameter and turn it into a rectangular equation? Let's see how we can do that. So let's think logically what would happen. When this curve is, meets this curve, when they're the same, wouldn't this x value be the exact same as this x value? It wouldn't be, be the same if we, if at the point of intersection? And wouldn't this y value be exactly the same as this y value at the point of intersection? Right, so why don't we instead, why don't we use substitution? Why don't we substitute the parametric equation into the rectangular equation? So that, because we know that that would be true when they're equal, that would be true. So why don't we do that? Let's, let's substitute this parametric equation into the rectangular equation and solve and see what we can find out. Let's just kind of investigate that. So this x I'm going to replace with t squared and this y I'm going to replace with 4t and then I have the plus 4 equals 0. So now my job is going to be to find when that happens. When does the curve, you know, when do we get to point A? When does that happen? So we would factor or do whatever we needed to do to solve the equation. So let's see, it looks like we have t plus 2. Now if we had two t values, I might be a little concerned, just a little bit, right? Because it says the curve, um, the line and that curve meet at point A. It doesn't indicate that there's another point also. So, but there's just one, right? T is, so T would be negative 2. So that's when this happens, when the curve meets the line. So what we want though is we want to find the coordinates of point A. We know when it happens now, but what would the coordinates of point A be? So to do that, I'm going to have to use my parametric equations to plug my time into to my parametric equations and see what the coordinates of that point would be. So we would do x equals negative 2 squared, or that would give me a 4, and y equals 4 times negative 2, or that would be a negative 8. So point A is going to be at 4, negative 8. Now I was able to do that without going into rectangular form. You know, I, w I didn't have to eliminate the parameter and turn it into rectangular and then go back. We were able to do that just working with parametrics. We okay with that? Okay.